What I'm going to have you do is just go around my wrist three or four times, whatever you prefer. Happily. Don't, don't worry about the hair. It'll grow back. That's perfect. Criminals love to use duct tape to kidnap people, but if the victims knew how easy it is to escape, many would still be alive. Wow. These techniques are simple and effective, but it's not just spies who can benefit from this knowledge. Everyday civilians can use these secrets to keep themselves and their families safer. Welcome back to the Steve Malzberg Show. I'm Dennis Michael Lynch, filling in for Steve today, and I'm joined by the man you just saw in that video, Jason Hansen. He's a former CIA officer and the author of a new book out tomorrow called Spy Secrets That Can Save Your Life. Jason, aside from the fact that I'm intimidated by you being a <laughs> CIA agent or former, um, this book, it's positioned to help people like myself and my family? Absolutely. It's for home defense, for anti-kidnapping, for staying safe while you're traveling, hotels, taxis, the whole nine yards. All right. I saw one thing you said in there that um, about spotting a lie, mm -hmm. right? Um, how do you do that? How do you spot when somebody's lying to you? Dennis, have you ever stolen anything before? Yes, I have. See, you're being honest. All of us have stolen something. You know, we were sixth grade, we took candy or did something stupid. When well, I stole my wife's heart. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I'm going to yeah, have to use go that. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. But one of the most important things to do is paying attention to the first three to five seconds of an answer. So we are not naturally born as liars. So if I ask you and you're saying, um, well, I know you're lying about stealing, but you immediately came out, told me you're telling the truth. Okay. Our minds work at nine miles an hour, so sometimes we're not paying attention. You've probably been at a dinner party, met somebody, 10 seconds later, you're like, what was that guy's name? Because your mind was moving ahead. But if you really focus on that first three to five seconds of a question, you'll right. see, whoa, is that person giving me a quick yes or no answer, or do they have to conjure up a lie? All right, so let's test it right now. Um, ask me about how I did in college. Okay, Dennis, how did you do in college? I went to Duke University, and I graduated with a 3.7 GPA. Okay, you're lying. I don't know what university you went to. I know it wasn't Duke, and I didn't know you get a 3.7. You took a gasp because you were, this isn't the truth. Plus, I was watching your eyes, and your eyes went up and to the right. So both of those indicators tell me that you didn't go. So where did you go to college if you went to college at all? <laughs> I didn't go to, co I didn't okay. go to college. There you pretty go. good, pretty good. I, now something I think where people really feel also it's close to home. Uh, you wrote about, you know, uh, in today's world, kids at school. Mm -hmm. I mean, we all know about some of the things that have taken place where shooters go into a school. I mean, what can I tell my kids? Uh, I'm sh sure something like that is in the book. Yeah, right? absolutely. What can I tell my kids to do if something like that happens? You know, I don't advocate for kids to obviously run out there and be heroes unless they're trained, but you know, elementary school kids clearly are not. Right. Is just flee and get away to safety. Hide under your desk. Wait for a police officer to come. You know, make sure okay. you see a badge or something. So a lot of the problems is, is, you know, again, kids will run out there, they'll look around and see what's going on, is no, absolutely go away. Somebody will come and tell you that it's safe to come out, but don't be curious and stick your head out there. You know, one of the things, too, is I, I travel the country a lot, and I, I give speeches, mm -hmm. and I'm always in front of people, and, you know, periodically I get that guy who comes <laughs> up, and I'm just looking at him. Right, yep. I mean, is there anything we were talking about before we came on set? You were showing me a pen. Yes. So, right? Yeah, so. So this is a tactical pen, a right. very simple self-defense pen. I mean, all it is is a writing utensil, right. but you can strike somebody in the neck. You can strike somebody in the ribs. I mean, I've literally had people whose lives have been saved because somebody attacked them, they fought them off, and then they flee to safety. Yeah, I mean, I've actually had people uh, right, so, yeah, like, grab up at my me, hand. That's, that's not going to feel good if I'm jabbing you in the right, hand because right. you're reaching out to me. You know, the other thing, too, I mean, and these are all such serious problems, and I think that your book is uh, positioned at a perfect time. Mm -hmm. uh, lone wolf. Yes. I mean, the lone wolf that we hear, you know, we're all scared about is, is, is you know, ISIS and people coming over here and ISIS telling people to go out and uh, kill police officers, kill people in the military. Mm -hmm. I mean... Uh, as a CIA agent, what, what are the things that you would look for in being able to identify a lone wolf? Because that's tough. Absolutely. It's tough. Yeah. I call it survival intelligence. Some people call it situational awareness. So you're really paying attention to your surroundings. You're not walking across the street texting where you have no idea what's going on. Because a lot of these, you can see the guy in the gray coat when it's 100 degrees out walking in. And you say, i got to get out of here. That doesn't add up. So it's really just paying attention to your surroundings. You spot danger ahead of time, and then you can call police. You can get out of there instead of walking in a place you know, with your head down again because you haven't been paying attention. So really just being more aware of your surroundings on an everyday basis. I mean, so if somebody is coming up to you and attacking and you don't got the pen or whatever mm -hmm. it may be, is, is it, I mean, what, what's best? I mean, is it best to try to slug out with the person or is it best to run? Is it best to scream? I mean, what's, what's the best solution? It all depends on where it's at. I mean, if you're 100 yards away and the guy's coming down, obviously run. But if it's you and me right here, you need to take him down because if you run, he's just going to shoot you in the back because you're still so close. 
So it can be kicking them in the growing. It can be jabbing them in the neck with a pen or any item you have. So you've got to do something to fight back and be aggressive. Don't flee because that guy's going to shoot you in the back. Well, I can tell you right now, I'm keeping this book because in today's day and age, I mean, this is like a survival guide. Um, it's out this week. Where is it that people can see it? Any major bookseller, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Books A Million, you name it. Up next, more of the Steve Malsberg Show. I'm Dennis Michael Lynch. But before we go, Carly Fiorina is surging in the polls. Is she your candidate? Or is it still Donald Trump or Ben Carson? Who is your 2016 GOP candidate? Vote now at NewsmaxPoll.com. That's NewsmaxPoll.com.